Now, let's begin reading in the book of James. Let's look in the third chapter. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Now look at this second verse. In many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect or a mature man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, wherever the governor or the captain listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter, a little fire kindles. He said, look how small a piece of wood the kindling is. Look how small, look how small a match is that started that whole thing, burned down that whole farmhouse, burned down the whole barn and all started one little piece of kindling. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body, sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every kind of beast, of birds, serpents, and of things in the sea. You notice the different categories of the animal kingdom there? Things that fly, things that crawl, things that walk, and things that swim. Don't you remember that God gave dominion over the earth? And all of those categories were involved. Now, the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Now, let's go back to the first chapter. Verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. So don't come tell me that the tongue cannot be tamed. Because we just found that out right there in the first chapter. Now, let's back up here and take another look at this. First of all, before I get in, into that area there, I want to make this point here. The man that bridles his tongue is a mature man. Now, do you remember that the power, life and death, are in the power of the tongue, in the hand of authority. Now look at it like this. The captain of a huge ship has his hand on the rudder. Huh? On the wheel, right? The steering gear. Doesn't he 
need to be a mature man? An immature person at the wheel of life has no control over the steering gear, his tongue. Now let's look at that. This is explained, and you really have to have help to misunderstand it once you, once you look in here. Of course, we've had some pretty high-priced help at that, but <clears throat> verse 6, the tongue is a fire, world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Every kind of beast, birds, serpents, things in the sea is tamed. Let's use the word trained is tamed or brought under control or trained of mankind. My, my Bible has a, a little number there with a cross reference. Or the nature of man. We could say it like this, particularly those of us that that know that the scripture says the natural man cannot understand the things of God. But the supernatural man, the born again child of God has the life of God in him or in her and we have the mind of Christ. Yes. See, we have the word. We have the Holy Ghost. So notice now how it says this. But the tongue can no man Tame. Well, we know we've already read verses already that disqualify that from it be saying that it's impossible to tame the tongue. So why waste the paper and ink to put it in here if it's impossible to do? It? No. Now notice, every kind of beast, all of them, every category of animal has been tamed, brought under control, and trained by the natural force of man. Man has intelligence at just naturally as a human being. Human intelligence is enough once you learn how, you don't have to be born again to train a horse. It would help. The horse would like it better. But you don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to use supernatural resources to tame, bring under control, and train an animal. Do you? No, you don't. We know that. But now what he's saying here, when he says, but the tongue can no man tame. Look at this. But the tongue... Can no man tame with the natural nature of man? Natural man cannot tame the tongue. I'll tell you something else. Natural man cannot control his imagination. That's what happened at the Tower of Babel. You remember that? Well, when you come on over then in 2 Corinthians, the word is very plain about it. It says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts it except, except itself above the knowledge of God. How? The weapons of our warfare are not natural. They're not carnal but there are powerful through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Or you can say it like this. We have the mighty power and the mighty weapons of God to put our imagination under control and cast out of there everything that disobeys the Word of God. So now, take that scripture and template it right over the top of this one and you can see exactly what he's talking about. Natural man can tame these beasts or bring them under control, train them. But natural man cannot control his tongue because he can't control his imagination. I mean, that's really it right there. 
and whatever he comes, has come across his imagination, it comes out his mouth. So, what, this is a dilemma. What are we going to do about this? <laughs> Amen. Now, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. That is a nice way of saying, stop it! Praise God. So how do you do this thing? The first step. Who is a wise man? Verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Let him show out of his life of faith. His good manner of life. Conversation there is translated manner of life. If you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. Don't speak crosswise the word. This has to be done with a firm quality, uncompromising decision to put God's Word first place in your life and final authority. And I don't speak crosswise of it. I don't speak against it. Gloria and I, as I said, we began to learn we're talking about here choosing life my goodness, I began to learn when we first found out about this that our, our, and I began to hear, hear my words for the first time in my life because I began to get the word of God in my mouth and in, in my thing. The word, when I, the word was now first place in our lives. We had made that commitment. We began to realize that if I, I didn't know it to do it then, but if I compared it to that scripture we read tonight on choosing, I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore you choose life. I, I, I look back on it now and our whole conversation along with every other natural person is already oriented in death. The whole natural world is on a downhill fall of death. It's all negative. The whole thing is headed that way. In fact, you can be built up in faith. All you have to do to get your little boat turned around and start back downstream is just stay out of the Word a few days. It'll just turn you around. Next thing you know, you hear yourself say things that you wouldn't have said under, under, under gunpoint a few weeks ago. But it starts coming out of your mouth without you even trying. That one thing that shows you've been paying too much attention to the wrong stuff. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll close it with this. We, we'll take it up, up there as we go. In the book of Ephesians, turn there, and we'll close with this. Four twenty nine. Let no how much? No. None. Let no corrupt that'd be death talk, wouldn't it? That'd be curse talk, wouldn't it? Not blessing talk. That, that, let no corrupt you could you could you could read it like this. Let no corrupting communication proceed out of your mouth. Don't let it come out of there. 
Then verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. That's unbelief speaking. The book of Hebrews calls an evil heart a heart of unbelief. Put away from you with all malice. Don't do it. What do you do? Well, rather you give thanks. Fill your mouth with the word. Fill your mouth with thanksgiving. Let no corrupting communication come out of your mouth. I began to realize every word that I used and every word I heard other people use to express themselves were all death, darkness oriented. I never heard anybody say it thrilled them to life. It thrilled them all to death. I had a preacher say to me <laughs> not too long ago, and, and I, it, it, it took me back. I, you know, I didn't jump on him and, and, and uh, give him words lesson number 10, but I, <laughs> man, I wanted to. Boy, he said, Brother Colton, I'll tell you what, that was some more killer sermon you preached last night, man. I'm telling you. I thought, oh, I hope not. <laughs> well, I know, you know, he's trying to compliment me, but he didn't, he didn't hear what he said. It, and you need, to, you need to be extremely cautious about what the world is saying. Oh, Brother Copeland, I mean, you know, I don't... Hey, what was the name on the back of that book? <laughs> Let no corrupt communication get in your mouth. What does that mean? Corrupting communication. It'll corrupt your faith. It'll corrupt your health. It'll corrupt the life around you. It is used by the forces of darkness to stop you from walking in the kind of blessing that Jesus bore for you on the cross. Amen. I just can't believe they said that. I just can't believe that happened. Oh, look at that. I just can't believe they did that. How many times a day are you going to say, I can't believe? You can, say, you can see right off this serious business. You can believe. You can, you're a believer. You can believe anything you make a decision to believe. You could believe the moon is... No, that's a little too much. <laughs> No, I'm a believer. If I make a decision to believe it, I believe it. I have made a decision to believe this word and put it in my mouth and I'm not going to allow anything to corrupt it. Think about how many times over the last 45 years if God hadn't arrested me and stopped me from it, how many times do you suppose I would have talked about being old, losing my mind, losing my memory. Well, you know, they say that the memory is the first thing to go. And there was another couple of things, but I just don't remember what they were. <laughs> that ain't funny, McGee. It's tragic. Well, I'll see y'all tomorrow if a train don't hit me. <laughs> and all the rest of that, that the devil developed to corrupt our mouths and give him authority when he didn't have it coming. Talking death. Thrilled me to death. Scared me to death. My feet are killing me. talking death, laughing at death, aiding and abetting aging. Start talking about aging when you get to be 30 years old. Well, the devil's going to talk you to death. That's what he's trying to do. 
It took 930 years for him to teach Adam how to die. He didn't know how. He didn't know how to talk like that. It took nearly 1,000 years for him to teach him. He finally got there. Words of life, words of death. Words of blessing, words of curse and damnation. Oh, my, my. And when you get under pressure, Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. You can't keep that from happening. Corrupt communication. It's very interesting to hear the voice recording of different airplane accidents when, they, when it's the, the words that the pilot said at the onset of those kind of things. And 99% of them are death. The worst aviation tragedy in the history of airplanes on the island of Tenerife. Two 747s full of gas run together. Man. The final words, final words of the captain just seconds before he ran over that other 747. He screamed, used God's name in vain, and shouted, we're all going to die. Well, there were some of them didn't. And one of them is a testimony of a man that started shouting the name of Jesus and started saying every time he shouted, God would move him and finally got him out of a hole in the roof and he ran out on the end of the wing and jumped off of it, praise God. And he saw people burning to death inside that airplane and, people, and their, their flesh just burning and melting and running down off of their faces. They're all on just this whole load of, of jet A fuel is in there and dumped inside that airplane and it's burning and, and all that. And he's shouting the name of Jesus. And he said, there's something like some kind of bubble that just come up around him. Well, we know it's the blessing of the Lord, man. It encapsulated him. It just come around him, and, and he could see all this stuff, but it didn't get to him. What you compromise to keep, you will lose. Your words have power. Music play. The words you speak control more than just the stuff in your life. Choose life. Stay on the God side of everything. When you know what to say and how to say it, you can speak life into any situation and change any circumstance with words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Choose Life, Choose Words is a three DVD or six CD teaching from Brother Copeland that shows you how to create the good life you've always wanted. God wants to give you the advantage so you can flourish in every area of life. Choose Life, Choose Words shows you how to thrive God's way. Learn directly from road-tested realities and practical insights from over 45 years of Brother Copeland's study, experience, and personal relationship with God. Get Choose Life, Choose Words today and change your life forever. Order Choose Life, Choose Words, the brand new teaching series by Kenneth Copeland on DVD for $35 or on CD for $20. Go to our website, kcm.org, or call us at 1-800-600-7395. For an additional 10% off, order your copies online. Take control over your life, understand the power of your words, and live in the victory God has promised you with Choose Life, Choose Words. Order today. Once again on this broadcast today, you and I have been hearing Brother Copeland talking to us about how life and death are in the power of the tongue. And you can't 
tame your tongue in the natural. You can only do it with the power of God resident within you. And there is power. You need to know this. There's power in what you say. There is so much power in what you say that you could pray a prayer with me right now if you never have before. And through the power of your words, making Jesus the Lord of your life, there's enough power in those words to change your eternal home forever. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, then say this after me. Say, Father in heaven, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus is your son and he is my Lord. He died for me. He rose again for me and now he lives for me. And Jesus, I want to live for you. Take my life and do something with it. I put it in your hands. You are my Lord today and forever in Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, like I said, there was enough power in those words when you believed it in your heart that it changed you. You are born again. You are what the Bible calls a brand new creation. And Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to rejoice with you. And they've got something they would like to give to you absolutely free. It's just called The Salvation Package. It's a book by Kenneth and Gloria called He Did It All For You. Along with that, you're going to find a couple of brochures just to help you learn how to study your Bible, get you on a good reading plan, getting into the Word of God, learning how to be on the God side of everything. And you'd be like the psalmist said, you said, Lord, put a watch over my mouth. Just as those words were powerful when you prayed them, every word you and I speak has the power of life and death in it. So you don't want to live this life without knowing that. Don't compromise what the Bible has already said about your future. Praise God. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life today, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland welcome you to the family of God. They would like to send you some free information to help you get started in your new life in Christ. Request your free salvation package on kcm.org. Learn who you are in Christ and how you can experience all God has for you. When you live by faith, everything is going to be all right. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Great Lakes Victory Campaign, August 9th through 11th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland in the U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Living Victory East Coast Faith Encounter, Orlando, Florida, September 14th and 15th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Word Explosion, October 11th through 13th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. 30 years ago, Brother Copeland taught the dynamic truth of the communion to one of the largest gatherings of the church since Pentecost. Utilizing state-of-the-art satellite systems and over 600 communication specialists, the communion broadcast was sent simultaneously to 200 locations in the U.S. and 20 cities across the globe. United electronically, Brother Copeland, Dr. Paul Young Cho in Seoul, Korea, and thousands took communion together. The World Communion Service, an historic event that literally surrounded the globe.